We travel north, a long way north, and a long way from home to a place known for its place. Well, to be more precise, fish in general. This is the largest fishing port in the UK and it lies on the coastline 32 miles north of Aberdeen. I would describe this as a place where real men work, but that's likely to be politically incorrect, so I won't say it. What I can say is it's clearly not for my type. And by my type, I mean Southern Fairy. Again, politically incorrect language, but you get my point. But like you, I wasn't here for the fishing. I was here for the golf and looking for a Lynx golf course created by Woody Park Jr. So our journey over land and sea continues, or in this case, a short buggy ride over an estuary. This is Peterhead Golf Club, the 18th oldest golf club in the world. the weather is so changeable we woke up to black horrible skies the weather forecast was horrendous and we turn up at peterhead golf club and all i can see is blue skies just keep them fingers crossed because i've took a drive out early and this looks an incredibly good lynx golf course another one that is very much off the beaten track see if we can keep this one right of that flag Oh, even that's pulled it, but is it enough? Oh, that was so close. How do you play this? Bit more. That was fiddly. I started yesterday's round with a uh, with a birdie. I don't want to start today's on a bogey. Come on, and positive stroke. Right edge. Yeah. Do you know what? It doesn't mean a great deal, but I like the idea of getting off with a par and not a bogey. Right, golf, it's not been as good today. I was on fire yesterday and struggled a tad. I'm doing okay in terms of the score, but in terms of the golf course, what I will say is uh, whilst the first three or four holes are interesting, if you're here for the views, then wait till you get to what is the fifth green and the sixth tee is just behind us and this whole landscape just opens up. And like I said earlier, there's a bit of drone footage for you now to see what's to come. But this idea of playing links in amongst the dunes, I just absolutely love it. This coastline, by the way, is, uh, well, we're in Aberdeenshire and uh, the coastline is shared with the likes of just down the road is, you've got Cruden Bay, 
you've got Trump, you've got uh, Royal Aberdeen, Mercar Lynx. It's another area that's just absolutely filled with uh, some superb golf courses. It just seems everywhere you go in Scotland, and uh, we, we, we very much know it's the home of golf, when you get out and explore the different regions, you really do recognise that fact to be true. And one other thing I'm going to teach you in today's lesson, yes, this is educational, is this region has also got its own dialect, its own language. And I'm going to teach you a few words very shortly. Before I take on the ninth, which is stroking next one, looks an awesome golf hole uh, that's just in the backdrop right now. I'm going to tell you about this language known as Doric, and uh, it's spoken by many of the locals. And I just love uh, sort of any region uh, that maintains its heritage through language. It's brilliant, and as I understand, they still teach this in schools. And I'll attempt. This won't be very good, but I'm going to need my phone for it. And here we go. Is the first one. Come over and give a wee bosey which basically means come over and give me a hug. Fuse your do's, which means how are you doing? And if someone asks you that, the reply is, I peck in a way like, which is, I'm fine, thanks, how are you? There you go. So if you come up to Peterhead or Aberdeenshire, throw in a bit of Doric, and I'm sure you'll be even more welcome. So we came up right to the very back tees on uh, number nine, just to show you the view. But what I've done is I've got up here and I'm gonna attempt to play it and uh, we'll take on the challenge. Believe me, and it is one. This is stroke index one, 457 yards uh, into the breeze. So yeah, I don't hold a lot of hope. We're certainly not gonna be getting there in regulation, but uh, I'll do my best, at least see if we can get a drive away. This is a monstrous hole. I'm not sure this is the uh, day for many driver. Come on, and. Well, hopefully you're picking up the ball flight because that is, it's going to get the fairway at least. So absolutely delighted with that because trust me, that is so daunting up here because it doesn't look the widest of fairways. And we've got a ball in the middle of it. Right, well, would you believe we've still got 220 into that flag and you can see it's uh, sort of hollering in towards us. Um, so yeah, so the drive, we're driving about 230, I suppose, which isn't bad, but I'm literally playing a layup, would you believe? Oh, and that is so nice. That's a four iron that I'm loving right now. All right. You know, I'm really pleased with that. And I'm reliant on a short game and hopefully we get it somewhere close for the four. Yeah, I think that was the right choice of shot. It's a chance of a four. I'm happy with that. I believe it disappeared off camera, but it was the right shot to play, I think, chip and run. But then when you understand the green, there's a big slope from left to right, which having not played here before, I wasn't aware of that. So yeah, it was half decent. Anyway, I think I've got to be happy. It's, what have we got? 10, 10 a foot or so for a par on stroke one. 457 into the breeze. I'm taking that all day long, but I'll be delighted if I can make the par. Oh, haven't it? Of all the things. I had the line, I just didn't hit it hard enough. What a golf hole that is. And uh, 
yes i'm a little bit disappointed that i didn't make the part and i love setting myself up that little bit of a challenge i don't know whether you do it when you come out yourself but stroke one i always try and put a little bit more effort in and just a little bit of concentration i nearly did it arguably the best photo of the week ever in my opinion andy or tracy in the comment section below Well, you can certainly feel the breeze when you get up top on uh, 10. We've come right the way to the back tees again. And uh, I think we're going to play off the white. I think there's a black tee over here, which is superb. But they're white sandy beaches. They look more like the Caribbean to me than Scotland. I'm sure it doesn't always look like that, but uh, with the sun shining, that's incredible. Anyway, we're going to get back and uh, see if we can take on. I've brought the wrong clubs up and I'm not walking back for another. So I'm going to play a six iron, 136 yards somehow. Yeah, got that wrong. Right. Let's see if we can. I'm a bit odd at this though as well, because uh, for some reason I like the challenge of hitting my six iron, 136 yards. Right, wind is off this side of me, my right. Took enough off it? Uh, no. Well, it's backside of the green. It's really interesting because when you're hitting half a swing and trying to control things a little, just how pure was the strike and ball flight super controlled. But yeah, it was a wrong club. But I don't care. Where's my tea? Good three with the six iron up and down from the back. I would thought my own sort of Scottish dialect was going to come out, which uh, something along the lines of what the feck was that, and normally the reply to that is absolute pesh. What's been really interesting today is we switched up from yesterday I played and last week's episode was from uh, Forres and that was pretty much uh, Parkland course I would say and then you come back to what is the links and there's so many shots that or shot types that are different so predominantly the short game becomes a lot more chip and run and uh, you've then got to sort of establish um, or get comfortable rather with a whole different way of playing and uh, it's why I love links golf because it asks different questions of your game and i think for plenty of americans who who come over to play golf in scotland and the uk scotland ireland it's the bit they love because links golf is without doubt very much a unique style of golf See that or not? Yeah. And when I say can you see that, we've just teed off from back there. I was going to tell you how good 16 was as a par three, and I hit a really good iron that was uh, never left a flag. And uh, well, 
the direction we've came from, it's finished at the backside, and there was a, a member just across on the 17th tee who just said it was so, so close to going in. It would have been nice to get a hole in one A on, uh, on what is such a great golf hole. But then you look back down, I can't remember that the hole, I think that was maybe, uh, that's seven, and then back down eight. It's just a real incredible area. And again, that run through from uh, fifth green right the way through, and we're about to walk onto the 17th tee. It's just an incredible run of holes. I can't miss this, can I? Nah, pretty deadly from there. Right, on to 17. Oh, do you know what, I think we'll leave it there. I'm on the 17th tee and uh, we're playing the last two right back into the sun. So you won't get to see a great deal. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm so glad to be on the road again. I had a little bit of a break and to be traveling again and to be six hours from home, then it's, uh, it's so nice to arrive at a golf course uh, in such good condition. The weather was incredible. It's just been it's just been another amazing day and a great episode of Off the Beaten Track. And as ever, I hope we managed to do justice to Peterhead Golf Club and uh, make sure you stick it on your itinerary next time you're in this part of the world. Right, I'll finish the last two and then uh, I might go and get fish and chips.